Hello, I'm Nicholas Hefner, and for today's Artifact Spotlight, we got a real treat for you. Today, we're going to go outside the walls of the museum and really bring you something special. Now, if you know anything about railroads, especially old-time railroads, you will recognize this. This is an Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe caboose. Now, the caboose served many purposes, and it has a really interesting history to it. But instead of talking about it out here, how about we do something else? Let's go take a look inside. Now the old railroad story goes that the first caboose was made when a man cut off the top of a freight car and stood on boxes in order to look above to see the train and also wave to the ladies. But that was his how history or the railroad stories go as the first caboose. Ever since then the caboose has been in strong use of the railroad ever since the beginning until about the 1980s whenever the uses of the caboose was replaced by other things which we'll get to later. Now the main use of the caboose was mainly a storage and a living place and an office for three of the railroad's workers and we'll talk about them one at a time. First off, the brakemen. Back in the early days of the railroad, before all cars had an air brake system and could be tripped manually from the engine, the brakemen had to manually turn the wheels as you saw when we first walked in to apply the brakes for the cars. So whenever the train blew the whistle to climb out of the caboose, and to one by one turn the cars as another brakeman from the front of the train climbed over to meet them. Now the second, jo the second job in here was the flagman. The flagman was pretty much what you would expect. He was one that flagged down the train and he was also one of the general workers of, the, of this caboose and the crew. Another one was the conductor. The conductor was the one that handled all the paperwork and all of what was in each freight car and things like that. And actually if you come over here you will see the conductor's workstation and where he kept all of the paperwork for each of the individual cards and all and the train all the information they would need before the digital age took that job away from him now as you can see as a, these are the three beds well actually you only see two that's because these chairs are actually folded up and turned into a bed so that each of the three men could sleep some say that in several of the caboose, it was basically their living home. So if you walked into a caboose that was in service, you'd probably see pictures of families and loved ones, while also curtains trying to give this place a little bit more of a home tidy feel. Then this yellow bar up here was most likely used because during the shaking of a caboose, much like in a subway car, you need a good little thing to ha hang on to. Now let's turn around. Now here you would see the stove. The stove was the main way that the conductors kept warm in the winter, and it was not uncommon, uncommon at all for a conductor to fix a meal for his fellow workers. And this is the water tank. The water tank was for the restroom and for running water for cleaning hands, and outside of the caboose is where they refilled it. This is the restroom. Don't think I need to explain to you lovely people on the, what the purpose of that was. And now, I'm going to show you this up space here. Now this space is called a cupola, and this certain type of caboose is called a rear cupola, because obviously the cupola is at the rear of the caboose. Now this is where a signalman or a brakeman would sit and watch the train, especially for something called hot boxes. Now hot boxes was when weir bearings would overheat and actually cause fire and break and cause the whole train to derail. So a brakeman would sit up here and watch the cars, and if he ever saw smoke, he would use the phone, or in some cases a flag, before the modern age, to warn the driver that there was trouble. And here you'll see where they stored supplies and tools for all the needs that they would have. And in this modern caboose, this right here is where they stored the radio in order to contact the train and any other department they would need. And over here, you would see where they store the flares, and also a fridge for the living quarters. Now I know some, especially the older railroad fans, wonder what happened to the caboose. Well obviously, just like the steam engine, modern technology. The brakeman was replaced by an air brake system and also automatic braking, both by there simply being a driver and his assistant driver in the front of the train, and also just common computer technology. And the conductor, once all the files went to digital format, you really didn't need someone to be sorting out all the paperwork. 
So the caboose is a really marvelous thing and really is a staple of the railroad. But as technology and as innovations and as the railroad continues to evolve, well, some things just get left behind. Well, I hope you enjoyed the special tour of the inside of Cleveland's own caboose and hope you have a very nice day.